interesting, though, I found this cartoon and put it up for the PowerPoints about the hand washing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, that's the first thing y'all learn, right? Yes, ma'am. Hand washing. Hand washing is key. As we think about that, I passed everything except hand washing. Remember your high stakes testing. That's going to be one of the stations. That's going to be tied to the isolation, cart, mobility, exercise. Hand washing. All right, so chapter 24 deals with teaching clients. Patient teaching, family teaching. There's a lot to say about how well we deliver our patient and family teaching. Some do better than others. Some just uh, simply don't assess their understanding. They just hand pamphlets or papers and say, you're discharged, right? And then we do know that sometimes that's not enough and that can lead to untoward effects. We talk about the educational process. It does consist of both teaching and learning and there's a talent to teaching and, and providing this component of understanding so that the individual that is trying to learn can carry forth. I put the example of the individual who has uh, some sort of head injury, had to relearn, and you can see uh, he's learning how to select items from a, maybe a puzzle or something. When you have to learn something, it does consist of having a change in your behavior, your knowledge, your skill levels, your attitudes. We all know that. We get frustrated, right, on these tests. Yes. Frustration leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to depression. And when you get depressed, you just want to go. go away. Well, we hope not postal, but... <laughs> But, you know, you, you shut down. There's a part of your brain that just shuts down and it's not accepting. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. In all learning, and therefore for all that teach, and you guys will be teachers, because you'll be teaching the patients and their families, you must... Consider goals, and you must consider, are these realistic goals for that particular patient? Hence, you have the individualized plan of care, you see. <laughs> you have to assess their motivation to learn. There are some situations where I've had in the past, I've had some students that they, they, uh, they fall out within the first week of nursing school. They said, no, this is not for me. I don't have that kind of drive. Because it is intense, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Nursing school is intense. And you're having to learn so many, and you're getting pulled so many different ways, and, and having to, to to learn so much, and I mean, and here was clinical, it was a new experience for some. Mm -hmm. It was fun, but it also produced a lots of anxiety. My clinical group, did you guys wake up frequently through the night? Yes, because you had anxiety. You weren't sure what was going to happen. That was a learning curve for you. I dare say each and every one of you have a certain degree of anxiety when you try new things. Mm -hmm. I myself do. I'm not afraid to admit it. That's human. There's something wrong with you if you don't have any anxiety of things when you're trying something new. Just, just a thought. Now, you guys will, and as you move forward, you guys get your BSN and then you move on to get your master's or whatever. You'll see over and over, you'll find that nursing schools, nursing programs of all realms, uses uh, this educational theorist Bloom's taxonomy in terms mm -hmm. of learning. 
they, it's don't. gone through some changes and adaptations. But when we consider about how people learn, they typically learn in three ways, cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. Psychomotor, you know, that's a hands-on, uh, okay, I understand the concept, now I go do it. Just like my group, what did you do? You, you were, you, you saw the video on ATI on baby, right? We did a simulated, we didn't draw water for you, but you did initiate trying to bathe with the cloth. And then you went into the clinical site and you gave the showers. I dare say, and I'll be honest, I dare say not one of you attempted the hand that the, the oh, yeah. <laughs> oh did you? Yeah, I'm so did. proud of the you. Me and Jessica. You did do the hand. Did, we did the mitt. And Amber did you do the hand cl the cloth? You folded it and did it just yes. so. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Because sometimes on the learning curve of a new experience, some things get mixed, missed because you're under lots of stress. I've never done this before. You see what I'm saying? That's good, I'm proud of you. You remembered, awesome. You have what they call affective learning and that's where you're looking at, really you're thinking about the beliefs and attitudes, the values. You might consider examples such as role model, modeling or mentoring or things like that that might be construed as an affective type learning. Typically we have in our master's program where they will have a, uh, like an internship. I would say my clinical group, I, you know, uh, we have a new instructor coming on board. She's never actually done a fundamentals clinical. But she's going to be awesome. Hey, Ms. So, Dr. She's going to be awesome. And she actually came and just sort of, you know, not that I'm the expert, but I've done a few rounds of fundamentals clinical, and I shared with her my way that I conduct my clinicals. So I would think that she might pattern her similar, you know, but that's... She that's, said she was. She said she was. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That was one, one, that's one example. Remember on your test blueprints, do y'all some of you's got your test blueprint from me. You know at the top I, I put some of those words, do you recognize some of those words at the bottom? Remembering, uh, understanding, applying. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that top of your test blueprint, don't you? Mm -hmm. I instigate just reminding y'all of those Bloom's taxonomy. That's, that's what they transition to is these particular types of verbiage. And probably in 10 or 15 years they'll change that and make them different words, meaning the same thing. That's what people do. They just change verbiage, but it's still the same thing, you know. Well, you know, that's true. You know, so they got to have a way to justify their, their position. Five rights of teaching, you know, you have those medication rights, you know, but uh, so we have five rights of teaching. And again, as I speak to you, I'm, uh, I'm teaching or I'm lecturing and y'all are listening, or most of you, is, you know, you tune me in, tune me out, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but you guys are going to be teachers. You, just by the fact that you're going to be that BSN, you're going to be, it's going to be open to a enormous, you guys could be LVN's instructors. I say you graduate, you test, you could be in line if you wanted to to apply for teaching in an LVN program. That's the requirement as a BSN. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to skew you that way, but, you know, that's an option. There's many options because you're in the hospital and you're doing uh, patient teaching, discharge. If you're working home health, that's a big platform. Home health has to do a lot of patient and family teaching. Right time is the patient ready. You guys recall, I don't know if that was unit exam one or two, 
You remember that even the question item, the patient was in excruciating pain. They had a migraine headache. And the, the nursing student might need further education because they thought they could just give them a pill and let's go into an elaborate discussion, right? That's wrong. You've got to make sure they are they don't have any kinds of anxiety free of pain to be able to focus. Because just like you guys, you've got a migraine headache listening to me. I don't know how much you're going to take in. You're here because you want to be here for attendance purposes. You see what I'm saying, right? But you don't feel so good. So how much of this will you take in? Only one will not, you know. We'll find out next Wednesday. <laughs> nah, just a joke. Right context. When we think of context, we think of the environment. You know I'm very big about the environment, the patient's environment. Typically where we teach in the settings is going to be right there in their hospital rooms. If it looks cluttered and chaotic, that speaks for a degree of disorganization. It can actually bother someone, you see. It can. When you have a, a neat environment, it sets up for just a sense of organization. The right goal. The goal that we choose, we don't choose it, it's a collaborative effort and the patient needs to be involved in the goal setting because if they don't buy into it, is it going to be reached? We're wasting our time, right? Consider that. Consider everything you do is have patient involvement. Of course, the content, is it appropriate? And then the right method. Because some of you guys in here, you learn different. That's why I put pictures. You know, I put pictures and I do YouTubes and, and, and verbiage and I talk and and, and I tell more stories, and then I, some of you tell more, more stories because, you know, there's different ways of learning. Different ways. And we must offer Again, we talk about the factors. Motivation is key. You guys are motivated, aren't you? Because you want to get that BSN and move on with your life. Because this is a career move for you. Yeah. You, you greatly have motivation here, don't you? <laughs> you've got a you've got a force in this race. Motivation. Are you ready? If you are a student that has a lot on your plate, uh, for instance, you 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 have um, you've just been accepted at Wayland Baptist School and so you're excited, and then you learn that you're going to have to move in your your uh, ailing mother from another state. You're the only child, right? So you have to move her in because she's failing in her health. And oh, by the way, one of your children that was out on his own, he lost his job, and he's moving back in. And you learn that your husband's having an affair and, <laughs> and, uh, I've been gone and he's, he's, been, he's been running up the credit cards. Oh, I mean, I'm making this up as a guy. Well, you see, you have an emotion, a lot of different emotional things, financial issues. Now, I tell you, and we tell you first thing, what do we tell you when you come here? You cannot work and go to nursing school. It was a shock. That's what we were having that discussion. My group. I said, "Well, it was had to. It was a shocking experience, though, especially those first two weeks that you guys were here in nursing school. You, we told you, but you really didn't believe it until you experienced it, right? There you go. Ready? That's tiny. The active of in, being involved." If that person's involved in the plan, the goal most likely will succeed. Allow 
for feedback. You guys have given me a lots of feedback to this morning, right? And I don't really know how to handle it, except I've given you some a recommendation. You know, when Miss Alcazé gets back, y'all can follow up with her. I'll let you see the rationales on the test, but I, I can't be inside her mind as to how she lectured. You have to see that. But that's my recommendation. That's my feedback. Repetition. Just like next week, what's my, what's my clinical group going to do? I, I think I came up with seven or eight important things, right? Let's see if we can get them in order. First thing you hit, you, you get on time, right? You drive on time, we go in, and what are we going to do first? Feed, right? We're going to feed our clients because they're already, they'll already be starting to go to the dining hall, right? And then, what did I say? The showers. And the showers are sort of we're trying to do a correlation link with doing the assessments because that's one of the best times to do your assessment is when you're bathing, right? Because it goes quickly, doesn't it? The day goes quickly. So then you go and you get them dressed and they're up and you're making their beds and then you can obtain their vital signs because they sort of rested in the interval while you've been making the bed. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write your nurse's notes, right? And you're going to capture the information off the face sheet and all that, what, you know, the information of what meds, what you need for that care plan. And then you're going to follow up with your hallways, make sure that no residents are requiring anything. 11.30 rolls around, we capture AccuChecks for our hallways. We report those to the, to the nurse or the medication aid. It's really the nurse that has to get those insulin. And then you're going to <coughs> report to the RN or LBN charge nurse and let them know you're going to be departing <coughs> because there's more fun activities at post-conference that Dr. Moore's got set up for you, right? We go back to, we do a, 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 a working lunch, right? We do a working lunch and what everybody's going to do an S-bar. An S-bar. And while y'all are doing that S-bar, I'm going to be looking over your your note, nurse's note that you wrote, and I'm also going to be signing off on your passports. And if we've got some time left over, you guys will say, "Well, let's talk about this or that, or maybe we're going to do some calculations, or maybe we're going to practice get grab those crutches and practice." So we'll be ready for the high stakes testing. Yes. Grab that lady, take her over here. Now move her, put her over here. Grab that, put her. And there's like no places to wash your hands, and they don't have any of the things. Yeah, I recommend that you guys get you a little bottle of that hand sanitizer. I have some in my car, uh, but I highly recommend. And also, uh, and if you take your your own blood pressure cuff, make sure you label your name on it. Right? Good point, Dom. Some places they don't have those hygiene, those hand pumps every five feet. It just depends on what facility that you go to. But for sure, if you're taking care of a, a, a residence going from room to room to room, what you can do is you can actually utilize, they do have a bathroom uh, in each of the rooms. <coughs> they may not have those hand sanitizers but very limited area. So I do highly recommend each, and they only cost, what, 59 cents or something like that, the little bottles, you know. Just something, that's a good point. You guys learned uh, importance of caring, having your brains or having a little notepad, right? 
maybe drop down time that you finish something. Because see that comes in handy, it's going to click back and come in handy for writing your nurse's notes. But guess what? Y'all had the first roll of the dice. And next week you're going to do better. Because everyone's going to make sure that they do the feeding and the showering and the, their assessments and, and all that that I've talked about. But the first time, the first time's rough, isn't it? It was rough, wasn't it, guys? You guys, I mean, I said, well, let me see y'all's nurses' notes. <laughs> you know. Some had some, some notes. Some had no notes. Some had they, an attempt that they put a time down, <laughs> you know. But I knew that. See, I knew ahead. And we, we must be patient because we realize you're on a learning curve. But repetition. The first time I started an IV, it was rough. Now I could do IVs in my sleep, see. I love to start IVs. It, it will be that way for you guys. It will be. Again, I can't emphasize enough, when you're teaching anyone, you need to have a quiet and private space. You teach uh, something to your, to your uh, patient or family members. You know, if they have a conference room, that's great. A lot of times they don't, so, you know, pull the curtain. You know, close the door, whatever. You know. Oh, this is always good. Using time wisely. You guys, see, I wouldn't, you guys tell them, I wouldn't let you touch those charts, would I? Not until the end. Because you know why? I feel like people want to just hang on to those charts and then they've missed the experience of doing the care for the residents. It's not to say charts aren't important, but if you can't get the foundations of how to help a, 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 a patient to the bedside or from their bed to the bathroom or, or feed them or, or know, just know how to do a shower, or how to change an adult of 10. Who was the one that got to change three adult of 10s? Right, right, it was y'all, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes, that's all, that, the shower. You can do it, can't you? She can do it. Here's one that, can, absolutely she can do it. There's no fear, she has no fear. But it, you've got to do it. You've got to manage your time. You can't be balking at what you've got to do to be able to grasp and understand. These things you must do as BSN, as MSN, as a doctorate. I take great pride if I was, uh, if I ever get a chance, get enough time to go back and work in the pool, I would greatly don't mind to do my patient's bath in the ICU. <laughs> That's part of being a nurse. When we're talking about, here's the example on the slide talking about teachable moments. This has nothing to do with the concept of the person that had the migraine. Please don't think of it that way. This is a situation <laughs> where you have an opportunity to teach them about a certain medication that the doctor may have started them on. Maybe it's a new medication and you can share what this medication is for what possible side effects that they may see, et cetera, et cetera. That's a teachable moment. You're in there, you're administering the medication, why not teach them about their medication, right? What we're supposed to be proactive with this Healthy People 2020, we're keeping individuals healthy so they don't have to go in the hospital, teaching them community. We're having more of a community focus. You guys had this uh, in your, uh, y'all had to take uh, lifespan, y'all have to do lifespan psychology or? Oh yes. So y'all are familiar with Piaget. Y'all are very familiar. I put his picture. I, want, I thought everybody should see what he looked like. <laughs> or what he did look like. So remember now when you consider teaching is what stage individuals are at. 
you know, the younger ones, like for instance, concrete, you know, they like to touch things. They're, well, we're sort of that way too, aren't we? But we can also use that deductive and abstract thinking. We can look at an image and we can envision this is how it will be. Whereas the concrete uh, or pre operation, they use simple pictures. Just always know what level you're, you know, what level of patient uh, they're developing. Cultural factors. It is quite important if you cannot speak the language of that patient, you need to get an interpreter. They're getting ready to go in for a cabbage, a coronary artery bypass graft, and you can't speak their language. You need to get an interpreter. It's sort of mandated by Jacob. Hospitals have to have. And you guys can refer to that page on 561 that talks about being culturally competent. There's a big push on cultural competence. And in fact, hospitals every year, they go through this training of their staff and their employees, and they actually have a, a, a blocked off section that's that, that does address to being culturally competent and astute in terms of your care. Health literacy, li literacy, just being able to understand what those health care um, conditions are, what kinds of decisions are out there, what can we, how can we help them understand. Now, I will say the internet with the explosion of information, you see good and you see bad information. And therefore, that's why we, we redirect you guys toward when you're trying to create your care plan, for instance, or you're trying to write up your medication cards, we refer you to sources that we know have reliability because on the internet you can imagine people can get pretty bad information right make sure that the information is organized whatever you do when you're trying to promote this literacy <coughs> uh, give instructions in simplistic terms don't you guys do better when when we don't try to talk around or over you, y'all understand it better, right? Mm -hmm. So goes for your patients and your patients' families. Mm -hmm. Simple language works best. The, the, the military has a principle. Help me. What's the KISS principle? Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Oh. Uh, oh, no. Well, they didn't tell us KISS. They said... Uh, Hydration is key. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could. Oh, thank you guys. I heard of the kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, that's a good one. That's a good one. Y'all just remember, try to keep it simulistic. It goes a long way. <clears throat> demonstration, return demonstration. Right? You see, and then you do it. We teach our patients that are new diabetics. They are going home, and they're going home on insulin. Uh, we've been given the shots, right? And now they're getting ready to get discharged, like in the next two hours. And we have not provided that education. Have we really messed up? Yes. We've messed up. We should be doing... Uh, planning discharge at the time of admission. If we have the inkling that they might have to be on, for instance, insulin, we need to be starting that education up front. Because it's quite stressful, just for you guys that had never had any, that some of you have, but a lot, some of you hadn't had any background in medical, right? Drawing up that insulin in that syringe and then in actually injecting it into the mannequin, let alone a, a body, right? Just think. 